because this individual is a multifaceted person, right? Like, I, you wear so many hats. And, and honestly, I don't even want to start going off listing off the things that you do because I feel like when you try to tell people what you do, it's its own talent, right? Like, you got it's its own skill. So tell us a little bit about, I know a lot of people know you, but some people don't. So tell us about kind of who you are in your own terms. Yeah, this is cool. Like, this is like 90% my family. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out family. <laughs> and then like extended family and like welcome family in the space. So. I do feel like this is very familiar, but what's up, y'all? I'm Damon. Um, the, the, the language I use to describe all the hats that no longer fit with all this hair on my head is movement builder. Um, and so, you know, that could come out as a performer, as just an artist, as an educator, as a facilitator, as an organizer, or a human serving other roles that don't have like very good titles yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, you, you have multiple projects. So you have Ergo Radio. Shout out. Shout out. DJ Empathy in the building. Shout out Daniel Kisslinger here with us. <laughs> and tell us about that. So, you know, Ergo started as a, a, a passionate embodiment of the world around me. Um, and so me, me and Daniel um, went to school together um, and, and grew a relationship of like mutual respect and, and understanding. Um, and as we left the place where we met each other, we came back here to my home, which we've now kind of stolen him and made his home. <laughs> um, there was, there's this dynamic convergence of, you know, what I will claim as a, as a, a revolutionary thrust that was mm. taking place at the intersection of um, cultural stewardship and political organizing. Um, and so what that looked like was events like this, galleries, open mics, concerts, also bleeding in or being the same bodies or the same spirit of folks who were demanding a change of how government works mm -hmm. or making greater claims about liberation or frontlining resistance oppression, whether that be white suppression, gender oppression, sexual violence, et cetera. Um, and so in recognizing that those were not isolated but convergent, and participating in them, there was a real urge to, one, help those overlapping communities see themselves, uh, but two, to document it for folks who are not in this space and for folks who are not in this time. Uh, so for me, as a going into this work at 21, you know, the, the, the idea of what our ancestors or our forebears had done in this work, especially in this city, was really important to me. So a story I tell is like, as iconic um, and almost like deified Fred Hampton is in our mm -hmm. space. If you like go through YouTube, there's only like, if you put all the pieces together, like less than an hour of his likeness and voice. Mm -hmm. And that just feels like a historic tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, and so looking around me, I felt like there were a lot of historically significant people and spaces and work happening. And so wanted to be in deeper relationship with that, wanting to understand it, but also wanting to document it and archive it for folks to be able to access so that uh, 19 to 21 year old in 2030 or 2040, when they say, man, there was a lot going on in Chicago, they can have access and then take those lessons to figure out how to mm. transform their Absolutely, it's both this ongoing project but also an archival piece. Yeah. So like, it's gonna be history, it's already history as you, each episode is its own historical piece. <laughs> Let it ring to the press to speak. This more the wing, get less the beak. More walk and talk when we chewing gum. Multitasking like we polyamorous. Sign a painter with a pseudonym. Multi dimension crafted, multifaceted. Couldn't grasp it, we left them gasping. Waiting to breathe like Angela Bassett. Very tactics, they swear it's magic. Life is tragic, there is no practice. It's all happening at once. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about your artistry in different ways, mm -hmm. but I'd love to hear more about how Let Us Breathe Collective started and. You know. how, how it started? Um, you know, the, 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 probably the truest answer is like the world commanded it yeah. to exist. Um, and so grateful to be in relationship to not only my big sister, my life partner, but also that same community that I was talking about um, that, you know, have been articulating consciousness together that had been um, kind of challenging the, the, the norms of the old world were ready to deploy and ready to show up in this way and ready to continue a fight that is unfinished. Um, and so Let Us Breathe came into existence after the 
Ferguson uprising after the murder of Michael Brown uh, in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014. And really it was just like, yo, we've been, we can't be out here rhyming about these pseudo revolutionary ideas and then rebellion in a mostly black space four and a half hours from your home take place and you be stagnant and be passive and then still go try to do those rhymes with integrity, right? Um, and so once, at first it was like a responsibility of we have to participate, but also like, you know, these things come and go. So I, I wanting to see, wanting to document also, because at that time, you know, black Twitter is really just getting its, its space, but like CNN and MSNBC that, you know, they were saying a bunch of bullshit about our people. Um, and so the intention to come, support, be a part of, but also to capture, and again, this practice of keeping record or documenting mm -hmm. what was happening and spreading it in real time, but also becoming um, arbiters of the story of transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the origin, and then it grew from like a protest organization to um, a revolutionary, or I mean, it was, it was always intended to have a revolutionary thrust, but in practice and in praxis, it became much more community focused, uh, much more multidimensional. It always was artists and you know community builders and educators working together. Uh, but there's so much work that we do now at the breathing room space on the south side, um, and we you know it's the breathing room space now exists on a larger campus that the Let Us Breathe Collective is stewarding called Liberation Landing, uh, and it's really you know it, it, in saying it out loud here to you to people that I know and care about deeply, it really is like the greatest honor of my life and something that I would have expected would have taken 30 to 40 more years to build than mm. it did. Um, and so it is the, you know, the attempt to embody the world that we want. Yeah, yeah, and that's amazing. And, and part of that is also the Chicago community too, right? And how, yep. how much people get together in Chicago, how, how amazing the community is here. And I know, the 2020 uprisings, Black Abolitionist Network was started from that, right? And like, you know, there's, there's tragedy, there's trauma there. There's I'm not gonna do this anywhere else. You know, I, I coined that name. You did. I did coin that name. I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ban is the acronym. We're trying to ban the cops, get it? It's bars all day. It's, hey, it's recorded, <laughs> it's on video, it's on, it's on podcasts, it's everywhere. So everybody knows now. Um, you know, did you trademark it? No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> uh, okay, but you know, but that started yeah. So that, that that came out of you know something even you know more uprisings right. And yeah, tell us a little bit about that because you were doing so much, so much around then. Yeah, yeah, again, it's one of those like historical blips that many of the people in this room have witnessed. And so, um, I guess the the reflection is the way our capacity is not linear and the way that like you kind of don't know what you're capable of and you also don't know how to like assess healthily. Mm. Um, so 2020, as we all know, changed the world. Estimates of 20 to 40 million people activated physically in some type of action supporting black-led liberatory resistance, right, all over the world. Um, and so that's never happened in human history and, and documented in any type of way. Um, and so, you know, here in Chicago, obviously there was a, an ultra violent response as there was everywhere. Um, so the, the uprising began within the first 24, 36 hours with me being severely injured, my partner being severely injured, my, my sister being hurt, my comrades and friends being abused and hurt. Um, and so there was this like pool of like, how do we take care of ourselves or how do we um, center our humanity, but also this is a, a, a very unique opportunity in time. And it was almost some, you know, some, some well, my nephew's here, but some F you in it, you know, like we, you know, like we're going to show you like, oh, y'all really done messed up. Like y'all, y'all, y'all got the right ones. Um, and so, you know, mutual aid work across the city became something that people just got used to. Mm -hmm. And I remember in 2014, 15, 16, we didn't even call it that. Mm -hmm. And there was like resistance to it. It's like not important enough. Um, and now it's a go-to. We created a campaign to politically educate people and train folks on how to do direct action, on how to door knock, on how to create, how to organize um, in an abolitionist fashion um, that has you know, culminated in many, I think, um, ephemeral, 
successes. Mm -hmm. I think you know where it's at most tangibly now is had a in three wards had a 90% vote for the treatment not trauma mm -hmm. campaign to reinvest into public mental health and to take police away from mental health crisis. Um, so that's like the tangible politics. But I think what happened to us is we saw the world change and that it is also our responsibility to continue to change it. Mm. Um, and that like, you know, even that word can get neutered or, or diluted. Um, and so we have a responsibility to heal mm. our people, this earth, this environment. We have been harmed, we are being abused, we are being tortured, we are being murdered, um, and we don't accept that. Mm. Um, and we're not passive in that, and we're beautiful in that and we're going to create so much we're going to even have joy in this trauma um, and we're going to take care of our people in new ways and we're going to not only call you out point you out you know resist at every turn but we're going to again embody what it takes to make you obsolete mm. yeah I mean it's I mean just listening to you talk about all these things that you've done it's it's incredible it's like it's it's, it's amazing because so much of it, it's rooted in this sort of taking these really terrible, complicated, tragic, traumatizing things, but finding healing in it. And that's just, you're, that's what I keep seeing you do is you're like, okay, these up things happening, I'm sorry. Um, but, but, you know, but, but at the end of the day, you believe in, in you, you believe in your community, you believe in the people that you love. And that's what I see in everything you do. It's incredible. We are what we need to be able to self-activate and self-realize. Um, and I, I'm thankful to my partner, Jennifer, for like really helping me get into this space and to take this time. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because some people like are j just have known me with my hair long. It's kind of the way to, like, right. to, <laughs> to put the metaphor. Right. Uh, and so some people may think like this is a beginning mm. or an entry point, and in some ways it is, but really it was artistry performance that introduced me to community, mm. activated me in a movement space, made the things not intellectual or abstract, but interactive. Um, and so it's really the base to all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the base to how I show up and let us breathe. It's the base to how I show up in Ergo. It's the base to how I facilitate a gathering in these spaces that are really heavy or seemingly political. But, you know, historically and now, like any successful s structural space has to have culture at it. Like it's yes. dead without that. Yes. Um, and so to your point of like emceeing an event that theoretically we could just be talking about statistics or oppression or fundraising, recognizing that every time we gather is sacred. And people don't necessarily come back for the thing that they believe in the most. They come back for a feeling and, and the connectivity with others. Um, and, the, and then those other things need to be aligned. Um, and so to be able to show up in all spaces as all of myself, as opposed to one, not wanting to be the, mm. the activist that wants to be the celebrity activist, right? Mm. Or the like, you know, come to the protest, check the link in my bio, like mm -hmm. getting past some of those internal checks and fears of like making sure I'm doing this with integrity, but I feel so grounded, realized, supported now that this is just like a really exciting time. Don't you let him